Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we are learning how to estimate the amount of material you need for trim for your metal roofing installation. What's up guys? Welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Metals and today we're talking about metal roofing trim and how to estimate the amount of material you need for that trim. If you're new here, we release content every Monday and Wednesday about everything metal construction, so please subscribe. Love to have you join the conversation. So today, like I said, we're talking about metal trim. Previously, a couple weeks ago, we released an episode on how to estimate the amount of coil you need for the panels of your roof. And we used Adam's house. Uh, we have a takeoff and field measurements from his house, and we use those to uh, get the amount of coil we need for his roof. And today, we're gonna use those same field measurements and takeoff uh, plus our inch and a half snap lock panel profile to estimate the amount of material we need for trim. And today I've got Jeff Hawk from Sheffield Metals Technical Department to help me out. Um, Jeff, thanks for being here. Uh, give us some first steps that we need to take or any considerations we need before we start. So this is a Sheffield Metals trim estimator. Uh, this estimator is designed to work with all of our standard details. You can see across the top, we have all the different pieces that go into our roof system. Uh, it doesn't matter if the panels are going over plywood, VDEC, VDEC with ISO, this trim estimator should help account for everything that you need to figure out. If you need to figure out a detail that's not listed up at the top, we're going to show you later how to do that using the same spreadsheet. The trim estimator can be found on your Sheffield Metals tech stick, or it can be found online at sheffieldmetals.com under the resources tab, under the trim estimator tab, and you can download it to your computer right there. Before we get into how the spreadsheet actually works, you know, one of the things that I want to talk about is this is going to calculate how many flat sheets you need based on the trim pieces that you're asking for and the stretch outs they're based off of. Uh, so that's number one. We'll talk about stretch outs more in a minute. Uh, number two, uh, keep in mind this trim estimator does not account for any laps in the material. So say if you have a 12 inch lap in your belly or you have a four inch lap on your drip edge, you're going to need to account for that in the total length of the pieces that you need. The other caveat is that this program doesn't use, reuse any of the drops. So say you use three quarters of a flat sheet to make one piece of trim, it's not going to take that other quarter of a flat sheet and use it somewhere else. So those are things you can keep in mind, you know, as you're using this tool and as you get more familiar with it, you might be able to uh, use those drops to uh, be able to make offset cleats or deep closures depending on how big they are. Everything in the blue box is editable. So if you click in here, you can type. If you go into the white box, you, you can't, uh, that's all auto generated. So you can't type in there. So we have our details across the top, so then we have our information on the left side. The uh, first thing we'll talk about is stretch out. A stretch out is how big of a piece of metal you need to make the piece of trim that you're, that you're trying to make. So these stretch outs can be customized to whatever sizes you do normally or whatever the project dictates. Right now we have standard sizes in here. If you have standard sizes, it's probably the only thing you'll have to change is your Z-closure because as your panel height changes, then obviously your Z-closure height is going to change as well. So that's your stretch out. The second one is your flat sheet width. Uh, flat sheets are 48 inches wide. If you're making it out of coil, you can come in here and edit it and have it either be a 20 or 24 inch coil if that's what you're using. Uh, the next line it's going to give you is how many pieces of trim can be made per one flat sheet based on your stretch out and your flat sheet width. So right now we have a stretch out of 8 inches for our drip edge. Or the flat sheet width of 48 inches, that tells us that we can make 6 pieces for those dimensions. Uh, here's where you will enter your lineal feet based on what you need. Uh, it's going to tell you the number of trim pieces you need for that lineal feet, how many flat sheets you need to make those trim pieces. Uh, here we have an option for fasteners because the drip edge is going to require fasteners to be used. So right now we have one fastener per six inches. That's based off of our standard details. Uh, based on what you have entered there, it'll give you a total number of screws. Uh, we also have lines for top rivets. It works the same way as the fasteners. The next line down is going to be tubes of sealant. We estimate the usage based on an eighth inch bead. Uh, details that are going to be using the sealant is going to be your surface mount, your stucco stop, and your 
regular counter flashing for your head wall and sidewall details. Uh, same thing goes for butyl tape. Anywhere that our standard details call out butyl tape, it's going to add it. It's going to be based off a 50 foot roll. Uh, and again, that's going to be your Z closure, your Z closure really pick, your offset cleat, uh, and all of your counter flashings for your head wall and sidewall. After you get all the information entered, it's going to give you a total down here at the, bottom, at the bottom. And that's a good estimate of what you're going to need to make the trim pieces entered for your project. So we're going to use the spreadsheet to calculate the amount of material we need uh, for Adam's roof. And again, we're using the inch and a half snap lock panel here. Check out the videos that we have previously about the roof so you can see how to estimate coil as well. So uh, Jeff, why don't you show us the takeoff for Adam's roof? Our typical takeoff that we provide. Uh, the trim estimator can be used without the takeoff if you have your own numbers, but these two tools go hand in hand as far as I'm concerned. So in the beginning you have a 3D view of the roof and then you have a panel breakdown by all of your lineal feet, also in square feet. And then at the bottom, this is the part that we're going to be dealing with for the trim estimator. It gives you the breakdown on all the details required for Adam's roof and it breaks them down into pieces. The assumption and the way the takeoff is based, these pieces are all 10 foot long. So break details, 13 pieces, these details, 16 pieces, valley five, bridge 11. So uh, first one we'll start with is we'll start with the E detail, because that's the first on the trim estimator piece. So 16 pieces of 10 foot long, that is 160 feet. So if we keep with the stretch outs that we're using, we go in here to line six where it says lineal feet, and we tell it we need 160 lineal feet. Click out of the blue box. It's gonna have one fastener for every six inches to install it. Click out of it, and it's gonna tell you that you need three flat sheets and 320 pancake head fasteners for your total down at the bottom to install that detail. And that's basically how all these different lines are gonna work. So if we go back to Adam's take off, um, next one will be a rake detail, 13 pieces or 130 feet. Uh, rake detail and cable, 130 feet. It adds it all in. It tells you you're going to need 13 pieces of trim and four total flat sheets. Now, what's cool about this is that since we added a gable piece in, the program knows that the gable also needs a Z closure and a starter cleat. So it's automatically added it in here for you. So if you look over here, it's added in 130 feet of uh, Z closure because that's the amount that you're going to need. Same for the gable. And it's also added 130 feet of starter cleat in to use at the bottom of your gable. So the program does automate some things based on what it knows, and the gable is one of them. So you're going to see that example in a couple more. Uh, if we go back to the takeoff, uh, we need valley detail, five pieces or 50 feet. So we come over here to the valley, we add in 50 feet, look out of it, it estimates how many pieces and how many flat sheets we need, but it has also added in our offset cleat. The offset cleat has 100 lineal feet because you need an offset cleat on each side of the valley. So now you have the proper amount of offset cleat for your valley. That'll do the same with the ridge and the Z closures. So we go back to the takeoff. We have 11 pieces of ridge detail or 110 feet. We're going to zero out the gable detail for this example. So you can see how it adds the Z closures. We'll do 110 lineal feet. And it's added 220 feet of Z closure because you need a Z closure on each side. So it's automatically added into your Z closure for you. We'll go ahead and add in the 130 feet of gable. So we have a good estimate. We need 18 flat sheets. We need 1,865 pancake head fasteners. We need 139 pop rivets. You need nine rolls of butyl tape. And that's how you would estimate the trim on Adam's house. Uh, a couple other things that we'll talk about real quick. Head wall and side wall. Over here you'll notice that you have different flashing options. 
this isn't going to auto generate for you. So say you need 100 lineal feet of sidewall. It's going to add your Z closures in because it knows it needs a Z closure, but it's not going to add your counter flashing in. You're going to have to enter that in manually. And the reason for that is because you have three different options. You might have 100 lineal feet of sidewall, but you might only need 80 feet of surface mount and 20 feet of rigging. So you can add those in manually and it'll still account for everything, but it's not going to auto generate it for you. Say you have a detail that's not shown in the picture up here at the top of the list. I would use the drip edge because it's not going to auto generate anything. And you can put whatever stretch out it is you'd like in here. So say if you have to do uh, a coping cap for setting, you know, you could say, okay, well, my coping tip stretch out is 16 inches. I'm still making it out of a 48 inch sheet. Okay, I'm going to need three pieces of trim, makes three pieces of trim for that sheet, and I have 200 feet of coping I have to do. It's still going to give you the same, same information. So it tells you you need seven flat sheets, you're going to need to make 20 pieces, and you can add in fasteners if you like. It could be, you know, you want to fasten it off every foot. So, but you want to, you want to fasten on each side, so you do two fasteners every 12 inches and that would be what you need to do and make that custom piece of trim so while it's designed around our standard installation details you know it's flexible with certain things if you have custom stuff come up so you said that lap is not accounted for in the trim estimator how would you account for that later on after you get your um, material estimates if you're getting a uh, takeoff provided by Sheffield and we use Rupian Works as our service because they do a great job and they provide a lot of information. Uh, if, as you scroll down your takeoff, you're going to see a note right here and it's going to talk about your flashings. And it's going to tell you that trim is calculated in the semi pieces are 10 foot over, overall length, why we were talking about 13 pieces equals 130 feet, and that it has a four inch overlap at all joints. So if you're using this takeoff, lap is already really accounted for when you're using the trim estimator with the exception of your valley. Uh, per our standard installation details, we use a 12 inch lap. So if you're calculating that you have 100 lineal feet and you need 10 pieces to do that 100 lineal feet, you're probably actually, get, in, in, in all reality, going to need 11 pieces because you're going to have a foot of lap at each joint. So again, those are things to take into account when you are doing your total estimate uh, of, of your lineal footage. So a couple of things to keep in mind. This calculates the exact number of pieces that you need. This doesn't include if anything gets damaged. This doesn't include any waste. This doesn't include any extras. So this would be the bare bones minimum of what you should order to make the trip. More than likely, people are going to order extra flat sheets because things do get damaged. Things get scratched. You, know, you find out that the numbers aren't as accurate as you thought they were. So again, this is this is good estimating tool. This is good for checking your numbers. This is good as a second set of eyes uh, or a quick estimate. You know, if you got to get a bid together real quick, you can do this. Add a percentage on to whatever it is, and you feel pretty comfortable uh, that what you're going to put out there is accurate. This is basically a quick overview of how the trim estimator works. If you have any questions, feel free to call us. If you see anything that can be improved on, feel free to call us. Other than that, I'd like to thank Roofing Works for the takeoff. Again, I think they do a great job, provide great information, and uh, they make the whole estimating process that much easier. Awesome. Well, thanks, Jeff. Really appreciate it. Again, if you want to get the trim estimator, check it out on our website or with our tech stick, um, and you can estimate the amount of material you need for your trim. Uh, thanks for watching today. Comment down below if you have any questions. Make sure you subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. We'll catch you next time.